What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of In My Feelings, where it's just me being all up in my feelings. Today, I am discussing and talking about how movie studios and production companies ruin films. Say it again. Movie studios, production companies ruin films with their fucking notes. They give these notes. So anybody that's never written anything for a studio or a production company, you write your script, they either hire you to write something or you present them with the script and they say, yo, we want to pay you to continue revising this so we want to pay you to option the script to make this movie, whatever, whatever. And you go off as the writer and you go write something that you feel like is good. Okay, now I want to preface this. No, no script is ready after one draft. You always have to do rewrites. There's always going to be rewrites. No matter how great you think your first draft is, there's going to be rewrites. Your shit ain't perfect. It's going to be imperfections and flaws that you didn't realize were within the script. Okay. So what happens is you send your script off to the studio or the production company. They give you your notes. You're like, okay. Now, the note, my, my, this is what I've experienced when it comes to these notes. And, I, and I'm bringing this up because I heard House Party wasn't good. I heard the new House Party movie wasn't good. And I don't know who's to blame for that. You know, it could have been poor writing from the get-go. Or... Excuse me, I just heard a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I don't know if those crumbs and nuts are, you know, falling out of my mouth. So, <laughs> so I don't know if it was poor writing from the beginning. I don't know if it was casting. And I don't know. So what I said when I heard House Party wasn't good, I said it might have was good. It could have been good. And then the studio gets involved or the production company gets involved and they start giving all these notes and all these things that would have made it special and all these things that would have made it good have been removed from the script because the studio and or production company had their notes. Now, this is what I've experienced, you know, and I'm not even going to say the projects because I've, I've been writing for a while. Y'all don't know this, but I've been writing for a while, so... You know, even when it comes to the projects that I'm currently working on, I, I've written scripts for other people prior to um, the other projects that I've, I've been fortunate enough to work on recently. They're going to have their notes. Now, from what I've experienced is some of the notes are very good. Some of the notes is like, damn, that's is it is making the movie or the TV show, or whatever you're doing better. It's like, damn, those are some good notes. I'm glad they told me those notes because it has now elevated the material and they point out blind spots in your script that you may not have seen. And then, and then they continue to give you notes. And what they start to do when they continue to give you notes is now they're starting to take the initial vision and what made it special further and further away from greatness. They start removing certain jokes or concepts or ideas or themes to the movie or the TV show. And now it's becoming regular bullshit. But they want regular bullshit because that's what sells. They don't want to be great. They prefer regular bullshit because regular bullshit is what makes it to the theaters. That's what make it on the streaming service. Think about how piss, how many piss poor Netflix and Hulu movies you've seen. Amazon movies. Now some have been ex ex spectacularly phenomenal. You know, some of them are incredible, and then there's others that are complete trash. Most of the time, they're not that good. Do y'all realize Hulu movies and Amazon movies and Netflix movies and Paramount. These are all movies that when Blockbuster around were, was around, it would have just been straight to video movies. You see what I'm saying? They would have just been straight to DVD, straight to VHS movies. But because they're streaming apps now, they make these movies and they just put them on a stream app, streaming app. But we're like, oh, wow, this is a new Netflix movie. It's a new Amazon movie. And yeah, some of them are box office quality movies and others are trash and i'm gonna tell you why you get the trash 
the trash is it's either the script was trash from the get-go and somehow it got through the system because somebody knew something but then also it's trash because it was over notated some exec at the studio some exec at the production office kept giving it notes and notes and notes and notes and notes and notes and now it's watered down now it's just some bland shit. Now all the funny's gone from my experience. Oh my God, can we say this? Oh, we can't say this in a in a in a TV show. We can't say this in a movie. We can't do this. They start cutting scenes. They start cutting jokes. And then it's not what would have have made it great. The reason, especially when it comes to comedy, and this is a fact. The reason why Chappelle's show was so successful and In Living Color was so successful and Saturday Night Live when it first started was so successful is because the audience said, I can't believe they're saying this. I can't believe they're getting away with this. I can't believe that they're saying this shit on TV. That's why. Do you realize Chappelle's show, um, the initial Chappelle show, they let him say nigga. On Comedy Central. Nigga was said. I was around when it first came out. Then Key and Peel came along, and now you got white people, I'm sure, saying to Keegan and Jordan Peel that sounded like there was a married couple right now. <laughs> Keegan Michael Key, they telling you got these studio execs telling Keegan, Keegan Michael Key and Jordan Peel they have to mute and bleep the N-word. You got white people. They paid, they paid the money, I give it, but you also had access for a longer amount of time also. But you got these white people paying these black people to present their culture and their comedy, and now you're making them water down their authenticity, their actual vernacular, because they say nigga on Comedy Central. That always rubbed me the wrong way. Anytime I saw comedy, anytime I saw Key and Peele and they bleeped the N-word, when I know for a fact on Chappelle's show, they didn't bleep the N-word. But now they got some new execs in charge or the times have changed and you have some white person saying, oh, well, well, but you can't say that. We can't because we can't say that. See, we can't say that. So you you shouldn't be able to say that either. Nobody should be able to say the N word. Nobody should be able to say that. Y'all fucking said it for 400 years. Some of y'all, not all of y'all. Some of y'all said it. Your ancestors said it for 400 years. God damn. If we want to say it for a fucking a solid hundred, give us that. So anyways. I said all of that to say this. I went on a, uh, got on my soapbox and went on a tangent. The point that I'm getting to is this. God damn it. The point I'm getting to is the overnotation of shit is why shit isn't good. They, they water down and they strip away the authenticity, the edge. The shows I mentioned, Chappelle Show, In Living Color, Saturday Night Live when it first started, they were groundbreaking because it was edgy. It was dangerous. Comedy has to be dangerous. Comedy also has to be well written. Comedy also has to be uh, acted well. You have to get get fucking good uh, comedians. And that goes to another point, you know, when it's like, when it comes to these comedies, like, who are you casting? Who the fuck are you casting? You know, who are you casting? Do the casting directors know who the fuck has like who's popping? Do the casting do the casting directors have their posts on the comedy scene? I'm I'm talking specifically comedy right now cuz I haven't done any dramas. I'm just saying what I've seen when I look at some of these movies on Hulu and when I see some of these movies on, on HBO and Netflix and, and I'm thinking like, who, who's being hired to cast these? That's cool. That's one thing. Then is, do they have their finger on the pulse of pop culture and of the culture? Because if they don't, they're just hiring whoever's industry hot or they're just hiring whoever they see. Oh, I like this person. Oh, I like this person too. You know, but is this person really that dude? Is this is this woman really that funny? Who are we casting? Because what I know for a fact, man, to make a good product, you need to have a great script and you need to have a great cast. Those are the two ingredients. And if either one of those are lacking, it's not going to be special. You could put some shit out. It'll be cool. It'll be good, solid. May not even be good. It'll be cool. You need a great script and you need great casting. And these production, these production offices and these studio execs, 
They don't fucking know. They're on a they're on a mountaintop. They're on a mountaintop. When you're on a mountaintop, you have now lost touch of who's really popping in these streets. I'm not even speaking about me. I, I don't even I'm not even speaking about me. I want y'all to know that sincerely. I'm just talking in general. Like they need to know like who's who's the hot comedians on the come up? You know, who's the hot comedic actors? Who's the hot who who the people that's really out there with a buzz? You know? Instead of just going on fucking social media and be like, oh, this person made a, a, a funny uh, video and he did it every day for a year and now he got a following. Eh, but is he talented? Is she talented? You know. So that's kind of my issue, man, what I've been noticing in this uh, in this game. And I only say that because, like I said, I, I, I know House Party didn't do well at the box office. A lot of my homeboys are in the movie. I got a lot of friends that was in the movie. And I'm sure they did great. But like I said, I know that they're funny. So if I know that they're funny and the movie isn't good, well, now I have to look at the script. And then it's like, like I said, the people that wrote the script, it could have been a fire script. It could have been the notes, though, that changed the original vision that made it great. That's what I'm talking about. The notes that are given and you have to adjust and make the, and guess what? If you don't make the notes, they'll hire somebody else that will. If you say, fuck it, I don't want to make these notes. I ain't making these notes. Fuck all that. I like my vision. They were like, all right, well, bye, nigger. Bye, whitey. It don't matter what your color is. Bye, bye. We'll just go hire somebody else. And so they kick you off the project, and then they'll go bring in some other whack-ass writer, and then they'll come in and make the notes. And then it still ends up being a trash-ass movie. So I just want to give some. I just wanted to give some perspective. And I guess ultimately, I just want the studio execs who uh, won't hire me after they see this. <laughs> I want y'all to just stay the fuck in your lane. Stay the fuck in your lane. This is our lane to make sure we're putting out. Shut the fuck up. You ain't doing shit. This is what I'm saying, yo. This is all I'm saying. Your na- your job is to give notes. Okay. But, and I understand it's your money. I get that. It's your money. Your job to give notes, these execs and these studio heads and these production people, I get it. I understand. However, if you want something that the writer has, you should make sure that your notes is aligning with the writer's vision. If you option their script in or hire them, they pitched you an idea and you agreed to that idea. Now it's okay. This is the writer that we trust. This is the writer that we hire. And now we're going to we're going to give some notes, but ultimately we believe in this writer. We believe in his or his or her originality and we're going to do what we can to make sure that his or her vision comes to fruition because there's something special about this writer. And if you don't think there's something special about the writer that you're hiring, don't hire him or her. The truth of the matter is, sometimes they just be hiring people because they cheap. They're like, oh, well, we could get him or her for X amount of dollars. We got to pay this other writer this amount of dollars. Well, let's just go with him or her. And then we could just tell him or her to do whatever the fuck we asked them to do and make it into whatever the fuck bullshit movie that we want to do. And they're like, I'm surprised. I don't know why it bombed. I don't know why I didn't get a lot of repeat streams. I don't know why people stop watching after 30 minutes or 40 minutes of the movie. That's why. Your notes are trash. This is what I say. <laughs> Like I say, some notes are really, really good. From my experience writing stuff, some notes are very, extremely valuable. But then it always gets to a point where now they're over notating. It always gets to a point where it's like if you would have just stopped a draft ago, this movie and script would have been amazing. But because you continue to give your fucking notes because you literally don't have shit else to do other than fucking do notes. And I'm guessing send some emails and go on lunch, lunch fucking meetings and talk about uh, fuckers like me, you know, this fucking arrogant prick, (laughs) you know? So I don't know, man, that's just, that's just my perspective. Um, All the writers out there, man, listen, this is a long process to get anything made, whether you develop in a TV show, whether you develop in uh, a movie, stick to your vi- I heard Steven Spielberg just say this on the Smartless podcast. I've heard several other, um, who's the dude that created Big Bang Theory? I know all of y'all are shouting it out right now. That guy, uh, Chuck Lorre. I've heard him say it on the podcast. I heard several 
people that achieve greatness say this. Stick to your vision. Stick to your vision. If it gets to a point where the notes or the, the production or the studio is now taking you away from your vision, walk away. Let somebody else be like, y'all can still do it, but let somebody else come on board and do what y'all want because you want to be sure that you're proud of the, the product that you're putting out there. And you know what's in you and what you see is going to make it classic and what you do is going to last the test of time. Imagine FX giving Donald Glover fucking notes, too many notes. Him saying, oh, I can't, you can't say nigga, and I don't know, black people selling drugs. Do we still want to show black people selling drugs on TV? And I, I don't know about this. This is a little too weird. You got to do that look like Michael Jackson. Uh, uh, imagine those fucking notes. Atlanta wouldn't be what Atlanta is. So everybody stick to your vision. Studio X, I understand you got a job. But also respect the, respect the artist, respect the person that you've hired and supposedly entrusted to bring something great for your company and ultimately bring financial success. And I'm going to tell you the last thing, controversy is good. Controversy is going to get more eyes on your shit. Controversy is going to get more streams. Controversy is going to make people curious to go out and purchase a ticket. Okay? Controversy sells. So if it's a joke in there that may ruffle some feathers and get people talking... Great. That's more people that done seen your shit. That's more people that done bought a ticket. Think about that. All right, man. That's it, man. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. Justin Hires in my feelings. Fuck your feelings dropping every Sunday. In my feelings every Thursday. And I'm out.